Okay. Once again, a very warm welcome to all my students. This lecture is meant for the Act 4 of the Merchant of Venice. And in the previous class, we have seen a small outline for the scene 1 in Act 4. And in a detailed way, we can we are going to analyze the Act 4 scene by scene. And uh, my dear students, this particular scene in Act 4 gives a, an unexpected twist in the course of action where Shylock as well as Antonio are present in the court. The, the case is presented. The Duke is also present. He is inquiring the case where we also have Portia and Nerissa dressed as lawyers, as male lawyers. And the technique is called as cross-dressing. Shakespeare is an expert in using cross dressing and they have come from padua okay so uh, all the three all the four members or major members are present antonio is present bassanio is present the duke is present shylock is also present the case has been presented in the court and let me share my screen now Yes, I hope you can see the screen now. I mean, is the screen visible? Is the screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So once again, we have a revision of the scene one in Act Four. In a quick revision, we can move on to the next scene also. As I told you, we have the Duke, Antonio, Bassanio, Graciano, Celerio, and others. In the, and the scene is taking place in the court of justice in venice that is act four scene one so duke inquires about where is antonio antonio is very much present and we also have the duke the duke says i feel sorry for antonio because uh, shylock is acting in an inhuman way incapable of pity devoid of any uh, pity all right and uh, he's empty from any dram of mercy he doesn't have even a small drop of mercy he compares shylock as a stony adversary he calls him as a stony adversary an inhuman wretch so such a person is a shylock who is not ready to show any amount of or any quantity of mercy that is what the duke also feels very pity for the uh, the defendant that is antonio antonio says i am very much aware that you are very much graceful and you have been very grateful and merciful to me and you are also uh, bound to carry out or to implement the law and you cannot do anything else but to follow the law system or the judicial system of venice the hands of the duke are tied and he has to implement or uh, give justice or deliver justice according to the rule in venice right and him, Antonio says, he stands abdurate, is very obstinate. No lawful means can carry me out of his envy's reach. He is extremely envious. And my patience is opposed to his fury. And I am armed to suffer. My nature is, my, uh, my design or my fate is to suffer in the hands of Shylock. And nobody can rescue me. That is what Antonio has also lost all his hope. Okay, now the Jew is called into the court. Salerio says he is ready. Right? The Duke calls Shylock. And uh, again, he talks about the forfeiture of the bond and talks about the human gentleness and love. And he asks the Jew to forgive a moiety of the principle, not to cut any flesh from his body. And uh, he, the Duke request Shylock to glance an eye on the that is an eye of pity on his losses especially and Shakespeare also says problems do not come in single they always come in battalion can anyone explain the line problems never come as single 
they always come in as a battalion what do you mean by always come in battalion problems always come in groups there is a, a proverb in tamil we say patta kaalileye padum ketta kudiye kedum todarchiyaga problems varum problems will always come in battalion and not in single right now the duke requests shailak to show at least a small amount of pity on his losses already he is financially broken so kindly show him some mercy so we all expect a gentle answer my dear ju shailak shailak says i have possessed your grace of what i purports and i have taken a promise on my god jewish god that i have to take revenge and i have to cut off a carrion flesh and i am not ready to receive 3000 ducats and he also says i would rather spend even 10000 ducats to get rid of a rat which has been troubling my household and you are not supposed to bother about my spending of 10000 ducats to get rid of a rat i am ready to spend 10000 ducats to get rid of a rat what is your problem right and i uh, some people love they are they love they, they never love a pig but they mad they are mad about a cat some people are very much interested about the music from the back piper and sometimes some people do not like it so it is a purely subjective and you cannot convince me that whom to love and whom not to hate and so on so it is my uh, decision to take away the pound of flesh from antonio and you cannot convince me at all right okay shailak antonio says i pray you think you question with the jew right it is like it is a totally a useless affair you need not talk anything about mercy or pity to the jew he says he is the hardest person on the earth he is like a wolf and i am like a lamb right and it is like asking the mountain pines the pine trees in the mountains to wave and not to make a noise is it possible if the trees are waving in the wind naturally they will make a noise so it is impossible to expect mercy and pity from the jew shaila so it is totally useless please don't plead with the jew now antonio for your 3 3000 ducats Bassanio is ready to offer six thousand ducats. Shailak immediately says, "I am not ready to take even six times every part of ducat. I would not draw them. I would have my bond." He is very clear. So you shall hope for mercy, rendering man. So you never is you are not never going to extend mercy to the merchant Antonio. Shailak says. what judgment shall i dread doing no wrong sir mr duke you are free to deliver your judgment i am not afraid of it please deliver your justice how i how is the judgment going to affect me please carry on with your judgment i am not ready to accept or i am not ready to listen to the voice of mercy or pity the duke even threatens shailak that i can even dismiss the court but your learned doctor of law from annas belario he has come he has sent his lawyer and a messenger has come with their letter the letter is brought in the court the messenger is also produced right and basanio says the jew shall have my flesh my blood and my bones and all please leave antonio alone before you shall lose me for one drop of blood kindly leave the merchant free kindly take my flesh and my blood instead of antonio besanio pleads to shailak but again shailak is not ready to accept the offer antonio says i am a tainted weather of the flock meet us for death i am meant for death right flock means a flock of sheep i am the weakest kind of fruit that drops earliest to the ground so please allow me to die besanio and be re remain alive to write my epitaph epitaph is a an inscription written on the tombstone of dead persons 
on dead persons when they are buried in their graveyard people will write an inscription on their tombstone t o m b s t o n e tombstone refers to kalaril padikka koodiya kalarai kal nenaivu thoom adu enna seivanga people will write something uh, very uh, what to say uh, something nice about the dead people iranda avargala pathi enna seivanga pugalndu sila vaarthai ela eludhi vaapan that is called as a tombstone and the writings is called as an epitaph right and write my epitaph on my stone now enters nerisa dressed like a lawyer's clerk lawyer is nothing but none, none but porcia porcia is the lawyer in disguise as a male lawyer nerisa also comes as a male lawyer's clerk duke he allows them to enter into the court padua from belario belario has sent them the place is called as padua from both my lord belario greets your grace presenting a letter Bassanio says, "In the meantime, notices Shylock has been sharpening his knife. Shylock is sharpening the knife in the court itself to cut out the pound of flesh." Graciano says, "Please, please, not on thy soul, but on thy soul." He is playing with the words "yes, o l e, yes, o u l." Harsh Joe, please show some mercy. can no prayers pierce you how many people are praying for you to show mercy can no one uh, can no one pierce your heart oh manasukulla yaram convince pannave mudiyada please show some mercy graciano shouts at him since he is not ready to change his decision he calls him a carish spirit pythagoras theory is even men uh, uh, there is a theory called animals spirit will enter into human beings bodies and according to that in uh, in the body of the jew a carish spirit has entered that is why shylock has been so wolfish bloody starved and ravenous these are some images animal images meant to signify the cruelty of the cruel nature of shylock shylock is not moving at all shylock doesn't care about the rude words of graciano or bassanio or even the duke or antonio himself shylock says i nobody no power on earth is going to change my mind the duke reads the letter nerisa is allowed to present her himself as a clerk lawyer the clerk enters and uh, the clerk introduces the lawyer is as the name called balthasar please make a note the lawyer is name is baltaza and he is from rome he is a doctorate in law and the letter also informs that we need not misjudge the lawyer by her age she, the lawyer may appear to be a very young person but he is a highly learned person he is a learned lawyer now porcia entered like the doctor of laws okay so belario has sent the lawyer from a place called padua the name of the lawyer porcia is in the disguise of the lawyer balthasar right okay the duke allows the lawyer to argue porcia asks for shylock's name porcia also talks about the quality of pity and mercy the very important passage we are seeing in the screen now the quality of mercy is not strained nobody can control nobody can restrict the quality of mercy it is like a gentle rain please keep a notebook and pen side by side the paragraph is very important porcia compares mercy and pity to like a rain drop like the drops of gentle rain from heaven itself and it gives double blessings how does it bless twice it gives it blesses blesses the giver as well as the receiver even the kings who are supposed to be appointed by the gods themselves they are supposed to be extremely pitiful and merciful right so kings also are supposed to rule their nations with the quality of mercy and pity so mercy must be seated in the hearts of kings the kings must be empathetic and sympathetic look at the two words write these two words empathy 
E M P A T H Y. What do you mean by empathy? Anybody? Can anyone tell me the meaning for the word empathy and sympathy? Have you come across these two words? Anybody? Student friends, can anyone unmute your mic and tell me what do you mean by empathy and what do you mean by sympathy? E M P A T H Y. Anybody? Kokila, can you tell me the meaning for the word empathy? Any idea? Um, yeah, the feelings of other, sharing the wonderful. feelings of other. Wonderful, wonderful. Caring for others, putting ourselves in the shoes of others, not take, not to be taken in a literal sense. Getting into the shoes of others means getting into their situation, right? And think from their point of view. Thinking from the point of view of others, how you should behave, how will you, you behave in a particular situation? We must be empathetic and sympathetic. Sympathy, you know that, showing mercy to others. Empathy means feeling from the point of view of them. Okay. So it is an attribute of God himself. Portia says, pity and mercy, mercy is an attribute of God himself. Attribute means quality, right? And in earthly power, kings are supposed to be very merciful. So kindly consider this. We are praying for mercy. That is the same prayer the court is also making to Shailak. Shailak is very stubborn. He craves for the law, the penalty and forfeit of his bond. So Portia says, is he not able to discharge the money? Is the money available? Bassanio runs forward with 10 times of the money, twice the money, 10 times of the money and Bassanio is ready to offer 10 times of the 3,000 ducats. That means he is ready to offer 30,000 ducats in order to free Antonio. But Shailak is not ready to listen to his words. Shailak says, when a decree is established, when the complainant, that is none other than the Shailak himself, he is the person who has given a complaint, a lodged complaint, right? Petitioner and defendant. One who gives a complaint is called as a petitioner, right? One who is supposed to defend the petition is called as a defendant. Right? He is demanding his the justice. He is demanding the penalty and the forfeiture of his bond. Shailak praises Portia because she uh, she seems to be have taken sides with Shailak. Shailak is extremely happy. Right? Portia is not happy. Shailak is extremely happy to praise uh, Portia. Shailak Portia says that is thrice the money offered you and but Shailak has uh, rejected thrice the money even ten times the money and there is no other option except to deliver justice. And okay Portia says Antonio please open your shirt and keep your bosom ready for the Jew to cut off his pound of flesh. Is the balance ready? Yes, the balance is also ready. There is, they, are, they are going to weigh the pound of flesh. Portia finally makes one small request, a serious request. Okay, before you cut off the pound of flesh, Mr. Shailak, at least keep a doctor, a surgeon by your side. You can cut off your pound of flesh. My dear Shailak, please keep a surgeon, a doctor on your charge to stop his wounds, to avoid bleeding to death. Bleeding is not going to At least cut off the first aid. First aid is You can stitch off his wounds. At least you can keep your doctor by your side. Shailak cunningly says, Is it mentioned in the bond? I have bond. Have I mentioned? No. It is not so expressed. But what of that? It were good you do so much of charity. At least for the sake of mercy, you can do it, Shailak. Please do it. No, I cannot find it. It is not in the bond. You merchant, have you anything to say? 
there is no other go shailak doesn't allow even a doctor in his side to allow him to do first aid to antonio antonio has lost all his hope he is ready to die and he has opened his shirt he is ready to die in the court itself right Tanzania says, "I am married to a wife, which is as dear to me as life itself. She is a very loving wife, but life itself, my wife and all the world, are not with me. He is esteemed above your life. Look at the words here. He is talking about his life, his wife's love, and he says, 'Above all these things, I consider the most important of all these things is your life.'" i am ready to lose all these things all these things include his life and his wife's life i am ready to sacrifice them all here to this devil shailak to free you and the porcia in the disguise of the lawyer has been listening to the words of besanio says i be very careful man if your wife is here she would be extremely angry be careful about your words if your wife would give you little thanks for it if she were nearby to hear you make the offer if the offer could the wife tell him ah that is what porcia asks reshiana also says i have a wife whom i protest i love i would she were in heaven so she could entreat some power to change this karish jew he also says reshiana also says without knowing that narisa is very much present in the court she is he is also ready to sacrifice the love for narisa narisa also says be very careful before you utter such words if your wife is nearby she is also not going to love this shailak says please be the christian husband i have a daughter would any of the stock of barabbas had had been here husband rather than a christian barabbas the kodana sena she would have taken as a husband instead of taking a christian barabbas is a traitor right Shailak cannot digest that his daughter has been married to a Christian. That is what irritates him much. As I said, we try for time. I pray you purge your sentence, Portia. Okay, you can take the pound of flesh from Antonio. Shailak is very happy by these words of Portia. You must cut this flesh from off his breast. The law also permits it. The court grants it. Come on. Take it, Shailak is extremely happy. Come on, come prepare. What a worthy sentence! Now Portia interferes. Wait a little. There is one important information here. Your bond doesn't mention anywhere about a drop of blood. It only talks about a pound of flesh. So, Shailak, you are permitted to cut a pound of flesh alone. not to shed one drop of christian blood your lands and goods by the laws of venice confiscate unto the state of venice very cunningly and cleverly porcia argues that as it is mentioned in your bond itself you are free to cut off a pound of flesh but not to shed a single drop of blood and here you can see how anti semitic the words of porcia or she talks about one drop of not human blood but christian blood that is why throughout the play we can come across the feelings of anti semitism the feelings of hatred against the jews if you drop a single drop of blood your entire property will be attached to the court reshiano is extremely happy shailak was totally shocked is that the law Yes, that is the law. Rashiano says, "O oh, learned judge, pay the bond thrice and let the Christian go." Now Shailak changes his mind. He is ready to accept three times the money now. Besanio also comes running with the money, but Portia prevents Besanio to offer the money. Portia says he shall have nothing but the penalty. Rashiano also says, "Prizes Portia, you cannot cut the pound of flesh, right?" so if you are able to cut the pound of flesh without shedding blood and you are also supposed to cut exactly a pound of flesh 
not even a, uh, a even a bit way more or less you have to cut exactly a pound of flesh reshiano was extremely happy that somehow porcia has saved the merchant so why why was the jew waiting take your for feature come on come and cut your pound of flesh shailak is almost crying please give me my principal and let me go at least give my principal amount 3000 ducats that at least give that money i am ready to go out desania also comes running take this principal no 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 porcia says he has refused it in the open court he wants only justice and his bond he is not going to get any money at all now porcia says she gives another shock that his entire property must be split into two and the first half must be given to the government and the second half of all the property of the shailak must be given to the government one half of must be given to antonio the other half must be uh, given to the government that is how porcia says and duke says that is also the rule of the venus and uh, he says shailak says take my life and all pardon not that you can even kill me you can take away my life you are killing me alive if you have you have taken all my property what is the loser use of being alive without anything yeduve illama uyir vaalna enna prayojana please take my life also that is how he pleads and that is how chailak uh, moves out antonio says i am not going to take any of the property of chailak i am not interested about his property and and besanio and antonio sorry besanio and graciano they insist the lawyers to take some gifts as their fee right balthasar is the none other than porcia and antonio is freed by the court right and porcia deliberately asks besanio to give him to give him that is give her his mar her marriage ring and besanio hesitates to part with the ring in the beginning but later when porcia was very much insisting about the getting the same ring besanio has no other option except to give the ring porcia has get got has got a promise from besanio not to sell or give or lose the ring but instead of all these warnings in spite of all these warnings besanio and graciano parted away with their wedding rings to none other than to the porcia and nerissa themselves to their wives themselves it was a test they have lost their rings this is the end of scene 1 now we move on to scene 2 that is in venice same place venice in the street now we have porcia and nerissa porcia wants to make an inquiry about the jews house and gives the bond to sign another important condition here laid down by porcia is the jew has to be converted into a christian again the feeling of anti semitism the hatred towards the jews the fine has been levied on shailak it is okay it is accepted shailak was ready to give one half to the government that is also accepted again porcia and the duke are very much obsessed about shailak being converted into a christian this is totally unacceptable this is this is this may be the feeling of shakespeare himself shakespeare also expresses his anti semitic feelings through the words of the duke and porcia right graciano you are well overtaken by my lord besanio upon more advice has sent you here this ring and thus enter into your company at dinner graciano presents the ring and porcia was not ready to believe it he would never part with the ring but truly he has given the ring now porcia lost her happiness marisa i would sir i would speak with you i say to porcia i will see if i can get my husband's ring also marisa also has got a promise from graciano not to part with the wedding ring again marisa also manages to 
and I just uh, Graciana to remove his wedding ring and present it to Nerissa, who is disguised as a uh, attendant of the lawyer. Okay. Nerissa, come, good sir. Will you show me to this house? Exit. This is the end of Act Four. So we in Act Four we have only two scenes. Now we come to Act Five, Scene One in Belmont. Act Five, Scene One takes place in Belmont. The scene now shifts from Venice to Belmont. It is an avenue to Portia's house. So, with the end of Act Four, my dear students, if you have any doubts, you can ask me now. Or shall we proceed to the next act? My dear students, please feel free to ask your doubts. Do you have any doubts in Act Four in scenes one to two? Scene one is a very lengthy scene that takes place in a court. Scene two of Act Four. Takes place in a street where Portia and Nerissa were able to convince their husbands, and they they themselves presented their wedding rings. They are happy at the same time, disappointed at the same time, because they believed that their husbands would never part with their wedding rings. Wedding rings are very sentimental ones. We also have sentimental values to the sacred thread we are wearing in the Tamil culture. Am I right or not? Right? What is it? What? How do you call it in Tamil? What is the sacred thread you are ca calling it in Tamil? The Mangal Sutra. What is it? Anybody? Anybody? What do you mean by the Mangal Sutra in Tamil? Thali. Thirumangalam. Thali is a very colloquial term, but even elders in our homes they always prefer to use the word Thirumangalam. Right, Thaliing ra word, but casually use pana kudiya word. Very good. Okay. So, what happens here is, we come to the end of the Act Four. Now we move on to Act Five. Is it okay? Shall we proceed with Act Five? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now the scene comes to Belmont, an avenue to Portia's house. Enters Lorenzo and Jessica, Antonio. Was saved by Portia's clever arguments. Lorenzo and Jessica, who were in charge of the household of Portia, they are having a casual conversation at in the moon, in moonlight, right? They are having the kisses. They talk about uh, the romantic night they are enjoying. Okay. And Jessica says, "How beautiful the night is." And uh, enters a servant called Stefano. Right, Stefano says he says I am a friend. Lorenzo, a friend. What friend? Your name? What is your name? Why are you entering in such in a in such late hours? That is what he asks him. Right, I pray you, friend. And Stefano announces gives a good news. If I know is my name and I bring word of my mistress will before the break of day be here at Belmont. He gives an announcement that Portia is going to come in the morning, right? And we have to be prepared for the weddings in the morning. So who comes with her? None but your holy sage and her maid. I pray you, is my master yet returned? Has my master come? No, your master has not come. But we go in. I pray you, Jessica, and ceremoniously let us prepare some welcome for the owner of this house. Who is the owner? Portia is the owner of the house. Now he enters Launcelot, the servant who was working in the Shylock house. Now he has also come to come along with Lorenzo. We have seen uh, Launcelot traveling with Lorenzo. Okay. So all Lorenzo, right? Everybody is eagerly awaiting the arrival of Portia and Nerissa, especially Portia. Right, sweet soul, let us in in the respecting coming. It no matter. Why should we go in, my friend Stefano? Signify, I pray you, within the house, your mistress is at hand, and bring your music forth into the yard. How sweet the moonlight sweeps on his bank. Again, they start continuing to enjoy the moonlight. At the night time, Lorenzo says, 
Jessica says, I am never happy when I hear sweet music. But Lorenzo says, the reason is your spirits are attentive. For do but note a wild and wanton head or rays of youthful and unhandled colds. So try to cheer up. Here, Jessica also feels sorry about her rash behavior towards her father. But Lorenzo manages to convince Jessica, who has eloped from her father's house. He enters the household owner, that is Portia, along with Nerissa. That light we see is burning in my hall. How far that little candle throws his beams. So shines a good deed in a naughty world. Nerissa, when the moon shone, we did not see the candle. So does the greater glory dim the less. Another philosophy of life. The greater glory dims the less. Periya sandosha vanda, palaya sandosha marandu bheeru. There is also a saying in Tamil, if you want to make a line shorter, draw a longer line near the shorter line. Oru prachaniya parasir parasa kannu divert pannana seno. Itha vada periya koda pakathala pottam na, the earlier line will appear to be smaller. A substitute shines brightly as a king, unto the king be by, and then his state empties itself as doth an inland brook into the mains of waters. Music, hark, right? Uh, Portia enters the house, finds Nerissa. Nothing is good, I see, without respect. We think it sounds much sweeter than by day. Nerissa says, silence bestows thy virtue on it, man. And Nerissa and Portia was totally upset that they have their husbands have parted with their rings. Portia says, the crow itself also sings as sweetly as the lark. When neither I is attended, and I think the nightingale, if she, if she should sing by day, when every goose is cackling, would be thought no better musician than the wren. How many things by season, season the day are to thy right praise and true perfection? Peace, who the moon sleeps with the endymion and would not be awake. Music ends. Lorenzo comes, right? Portia also comes. Lorenzo extends a very warm welcome to Portia and go in Arisa, give order to my servants. Note, no, not all of her being absent here, nor you, Lorenzo, Jessica, or nor you. A yeah, tucket sounds. What is a tucket? An instrument. Your husband is at hand. I hear his trumpet. That is called tucket. We are no telltales, madam. Fear you not. Portia says, isn't there a Portia behaves as if she doesn't know anything. So let me give light, but let me not be light. For a light wife does not does make a heavy husband. Never be Bessanio so for me. But God sorted all, you are welcome home, my Lord. There is a play with words. Let me give light, but let not be, let me not be light. What do you mean by this? Can anyone explain this line? Let me give light, but let me not be light. Anybody? Anybody? I am ready to give happiness to all, but I am not to be taken less seriously. I am a serious kind of girl. right? I am not a light wife. Thus make a heavy husband. If the wives are very lenient, husbands will become very heavy. They will try to dominate. I am not like that. Don't take me for granted. That is what Portia says. Okay. Antony, no more than I am well acquainted of. Sir, you are very welcome to our house. It must appear in other ways than words. Therefore, I scant this breathing courtesy. Reshiano says, What talk of you the posy of the value? You swore of me when I did give it to you. That you would swear it till your hour of death. That it should lie with, your, with you and in your grave. Though not for me. Yet for your vehement oaths, you should have been respective. And they have kept it. Gave it yet judges clerk. No. Oh no. Judge is my. God is my judge. The clerk will never wear hair on his face. That had it. That is what Nerissa says. Okay. Nerissa continues to speak. Now by this hand I gave it to a youth. A kind of boy. A little scrubbed boy. No higher than thyself. And the, the judges clerk. A prating boy. Uh, that. Begged it as a fee, I could not for my heart it denying him. Now, 
Portia and Nerissa starts a fight with their husbands for parting with the rings, the wedding rings, right? That is what they are angry about. Portia says, can someone read it? You were to blame, I must be plain with you, to part so slightly with your wife's first gift. It is not only a wedding gift, it is the first gift given by Portia and you are ready to lose it. I am totally upset. I gave my love a ring and made him swear, promise, never to part with it and here he stands. I dare be sworn for him, he would not leave it nor pluck it from his finger for the wealth that the world masters. Now in faith, Graciano, you give your wife also to unkind a cause of grief and that to me, I should be mad at it. I am madly angry at you both. Bessanio aside, why? I will best to cut my left hand off and swear I lost the ring defending it. Bassanio comes with an idea saying that I would even cut my left hand and pretend that some thief had cut off my hand. I lost my ring along with my hand. Rational says, my lord Bassanio gave this ring away unto the judge that begged it and indeed deserved it too. It was a worthy gift. We cannot deny a gift to a person who has saved our friend's life. Am I true or not? Am I correct or not? A friend, a lawyer has saved the life of your friend, right, of Antonio. If the lawyer asks for a ring, will you give the ring or not? Anybody? Will you give the ring or not? Naturally, we will give the ring. That is what Bassanio and Lorenzo Graciano have done. And the lawyer's clerk begged my ring. He also lost both the rings. What ring gave you, my lord? Not that, I hope, which you received of me. Bassanio says, if I could add a lie unto your fault, I would deny it. But you see, my finger has not the ring upon it. It is gone. Even so, void is your false heart of truth. By heaven, I will never come in your bed until I see the ring. Look at the powerful words of Portia. Look at the, uh, the what to say, how the husband, wives are dominating their husbands. I will never come to your bed until I see the ring. How cunningly she says. Teresa also adds, nor I in yours till I see again, see my ring. Both Bassanio and Graciano, sorry, Lorenzo are totally upset about losing the rings. Bassanio says, sweet Portia, if you did know to whom I gave the ring, if you did know for whom I gave the ring, I would conceive for what I gave the ring. So I have given the wedding ring as a gift, as a fee to the lawyer and his clerk, which we could not deny because they have saved my friend Antonio's life. Portia says, if you had known the virtue of the ring, if you are really aware of the value of the ring, you would not have parted with it. That is what Portia was, he was not ready to digest the fact that he was actually, actually he has parted with the ring. So if you are pleased to have defended it with any terms of zeal, wanted the modesty to urge the thing held as a ceremony. Okay, Nerissa teaches me what to believe. I will die for four, uh, 40, but some woman had the ring. Pesanio, no, by my honor, madam, by my soul, uh, which did refuse 3000 ducats of me and begged the ring. The civil doctor even refused 3000 ducats, which I offered, but insisted on taking only the ring. I also suffered him to go displeased away. I allowed him to move away. But my conscience pricked me and I had no other option except to part with the wedding ring. So please forgive me. He asked for forgiveness. But Portia says, no, I'm not ready to forgive it. Portia was totally upset. Let, doc let, let not the doctor ever come near my house. She was the doctor herself. Since he has got the jewel that I loved and that which you did swear to keep for me, I will become as liberal as you. I will not deny him anything. I have not, not my body nor my husband's bed. 
not know him i shall i am well sure of it live lie not a night from home watch me like argus if you do not live let let it let if i be left alone now by my honor which is it my honor so both nerys and porsia were totally upset they are quarreling about the lost rings and they also eventually reveal the fact that they are having the rings with them okay Pesanio says it is not our fault. We have to break the oath because he, uh, the lawyer has been so demanding, and we could not make any other choice. I once did lend my body for his wealth, which bought for him that had your husband's ring has quite miscarried. That I do bore, and uh, I dare be bound again my soul upon the forfeit that your lord will never break more break faith advisedly. So, Antonio. even tries to convince the porsia nerisa that they have given their rings only to for, for the only to support their friends for having parted with the rings okay porsia now shows the ring i had it of him pardon me besanio for by this ring the doctor lay with me come on nerisa also pardon as for pardon my dear gentle graciano for the same scrubbed boy the doctor's clerk in lieu of this last night and it lie with me so both of you please forgive us we are the ones who went as lawyers gracian why this is like the mending of highways in summer where the ways are fair enough what are we cuckoos before we have deserved it rakamode cuckoos mara porina cuckoos they know, they always cheat the crows they will lay, lay their eggs or she says speak not so grossly seriously dull you are all amazed here is a letter read it at your leisure it comes from padua from bellario there you shall find that porcia was the doctor nerisa was her clerk lorenzo here shall witness i shall set forth as soon as you and ever but not not now returned i have not entered my house antonio you are welcome and i have better news in the store for you they have also brought antonio to the house so again we are going to near the climax where we have multiple marriage or marriages antonio says i am dumb i cannot speak up where is the doctor in new the new the art and the my dear students here uh, why should the girls make such a fuss about the wedding rings anybody can anyone uh, tell me why these two girls are very much insisting about the two wedding rings anybody anyone devadarshini can you say that do girls have too much of sentiments do you think like that devadarshini can you say that or people really like that or too serious about like that is it so important devadarshini are you here okay you are not here okay and now besanio graciano antonio everybody is uh, aware that the lawyers were lawyer and the clerk were none other than porcia and nerisa right antonio says sweet lady you have given me my life again for here i read for certain that my ships are safely come to rome the news that the ships of antonio have sunk is a fake news is a fake news and all his ships have safely reached the shores of venice antonio is once again extremely rich how now lorenzo my clerk has come good some good news for you and yes i will give them without a fee that do i give you to you and jessica from the rich jew a special deed of gift after his death of all his wealth will come to you nerisa as the legal daughter of shailak that is nerisa is going to receive sorry jessica is going to receive all the wealth of shailak after his death 
Lorenzo, our ladies, you drop manna in the way of starved people. Lorenzo is extremely happy because he has married Jessica and he is also going to be very, very rich. It is almost morning. The night is going to over. All the events have been uh, fully happy events or happy moments and they are going to enjoy the, their night time and they are going to have uh, weddings in the morning. And with the words guys, uh, the words of Graciano, let it be so, the first interrogatory that my Nerissa shall be sworn on in whether till the next night she had rather stay or go to bed now being two hours today. Right? But where the day come, I should wish it dark. That I were couching with the doctors, the clerk. Graciano talks about Nerissa. So Graciano has married Nerissa. Portia has married Bassanio. Lorenzo has married Jessica. So totally how many parents do we have? We have three happy weddings at the end of the play, The Merchant of Venice. As I told you in the very beginning or the introduction part of The Merchant of Venice, as all the comedies of Shakespeare, right? We have a convention that usually Shakespeare's comedies are known to have happy endings, usually with marriage or multiple marriages. We have three couples here, three uh, wedding pairs are here, Lorenzo and Jessica, right? Graciano and Nerissa, Portia and Bassanio. So all these three couples are going to enjoy their nuptial night and with the warning that the wedding rings should never be ever parted from the husbands because it has sentimental values and the husbands have to take good care of the wedding rings. It is the duty of the husbands to take good care of it. It is a sentimental value. And what happens now? All the conflicts have been solved. What is the major conflict in the play? How Antonio is going to be rescued from the clutches of Shylock. Shylock has been craving for the pound of flesh. Portia, disguised as a young doctor of law, a lawyer, along with the clerk Nerissa, who is also disguised as a male clerk, they came, they argued, and they told that Shylock was free to cut off a pound of flesh, but he should not cut the pound of flesh without a drop of blood being shed. And the Jew must also cut off the pound of flesh without any variation in weight. With these arguments, the Jew has been bound to give out his property to his own daughter. He was also made to be get converted into a Christian. With these words, we come to the end of the play, The Merchant of Venice. Hope you have enjoyed the play, The Merchant of Venice. And with this full length comedy, right, with all the uh, conventional qualities of the comedy, the Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice is a Roman play, a Roman comedy with a happy ending with three marriages. So now uh, we come to the end of the play.